will be replacing the intake on this 2007 E350. Uh, we, the way we know the intake is bad, we've done a smoke test on here. And it starts coming out uh, the front of the intake right here. Now you can get uh, some rebuild kit to replace these things, but uh, if your car has a lot of miles, uh, you're just going to have to replace the whole intake because there's plastic stuff inside that breaks. Alright, first we're removing this uh, piece for emissions right here. It is a T30. T30, yeah. And uh, this top bolt's uh, in there real tight. And then there's one below that. And then there should be a screw in the back side right here that we've already removed ourselves. All right, there's also one more screw all the way down in there. It's kind of hidden under all these wires. But right down there, and that should uh, take it off. Right now we're removing this uh, bracket with wires. All you do is push up on this back piece right here, and it should slide right out like that. And we're just going to set that to the side to give us some more space. And we will have to disconnect this hose from this uh, emissions piece right here. Okay, now we're removing this bracket right here, which has another bolt all the way underneath, right in there. And we're taking that out uh, to give us some more space. Right now we're taking this bracket off, so I have to take this screw off right there at the bottom. And that should uh, let us take the bracket off so we can uh, get a screw off from the back side of this and take this off too. Okay, for the ECU removal, uh, we just unplugged it from the back. As you see, just uh, little clips and slides on there. You pull these pieces out right there to the side, and it basically just pops right off. Um, you might have to reuse these brackets right here on your intake, or your intake could come with them uh, depending on the price you spend on it. Okay, now we're going to want to remove all these plugs from the intake. Uh, they're a little tricky to get out and we'll have to cut some of these wire ties holding stuff down in place okay now now I'm just going to be disconnecting a bunch of vacuum lines and hose and stuff this thing right here there's a vacuum line on the back side of it that will need to be removed get this piece right here unplug this um, this bracket's loose so all this stuff can be moved to the side. Uh, we are going to want to loosen this wiring harness right here. You have a bolt right there for it. I believe it's uh, E10. Um, E10 and there's another bolt over here holding it in place right there that one and uh, once you get that loose uh, you'll be able to pull all the stuff to the side so you can start loosening the intake all right now we're going to want to unplug this wire right there to focus and there's another one behind that it's uh, just the uh, wires going to the fuel injectors and there's a third one of course the one for each fuel okay I took this piece right here off from here it just slides back now I'm going to take this vacuum line off the bottom of this bracket just this little plastic piece okay to get these wires off you're gonna need a little screwdriver or something to stick in this white piece right here I'm using a little pick and pull it up like that and in the wire should just pop off fuel injectors unplug all right after all that's done you're going to want to um, bolt this wiring harness piece from the back of the intake which uh, requires a T30 all right after that's done you got all that unbolted over there unplugged whatever you're going to want to unbolt the wiring harness from this side, which is an E10. And also, don't forget to unplug all the wires going to your fuel injectors. They're on this side, just like the other side. And that should loosen this wiring harness. 
after you get this last bolt on it right here, which is also an E10. I also forgot to mention there is another E10 right here on the top, and you will have to loosen the E10 right here in this bracket to get the wiring harness off. Okay, to give yourself a little more space with the wiring harness, we're going to take this little bracket off and unplug this wire right here and then plug this wire right here this one i had trouble getting this one out uh, i didn't try super hard so you can probably get yours out but you really don't need to remove this one right here because the wiring harness has plenty of space to move after you do that and then the rest of it is really uh just disconnecting your fuel injectors all right now we're going to release pressure from the fuel system which just unscrews a little black cap right here just a little piece you can just push on get in there with a little screwdriver or something I've let my car sit for a couple of days see but there's still pressure in the system if you let your car sit uh, the pressure should go down it shouldn't be too bad but you will want to relieve all that pressure this way okay after laying the pressure out of the fuel line make sure you unplug this uh, cord uh, right back here this one right here and I am going to also disconnect this um, vacuum line right here from this piece right here just take that off and we're going to um, unscrew the fuel line it's a 17 make sure you have some type of old rag or shop cloth underneath because gas is going to leak out even though we did uh, release the pressure from the fuel line all right make sure you guys get your fuel line I covered up i put mine in a glove you don't want anything to get in there and uh, it will be easier to take all the injectors and everything out on the intake um i believe we can do that uh yeah it looks like we should be able to uh, just because it's a little challenging to take them out while they're still in the car. Okay, after that, we're going to have four E10 sockets. One right there. Two right here. Three right here. And then the fourth one right there in the back. A little hard to see, but four on each side. We're going to take those off, and I believe that should uh, let the intake come off. Okay, so to get this last bolt off back in here, I know there's shadows. But the one in the very back here, you're going to have to loosen this bracket up because it is, or take it off really, because it's in the way of uh, the socket really fitting in there, and you don't want to strip the bolt. All right, my side, on oh my car, uh, driver's side, part of my wiring harness looks like it broke off. So I'm allowed access. I will have to loosen this bracket up to get to the last bolt. But it's just the last bolt all the way down there that won the bottom. Uh, if your wiring harness is not broken like mine, uh, you should still be able to get to it. I'm not sure how easy it will be, but uh, mine being broken has made it easier, even though I don't like that it's broken. All right, also don't forget to disconnect these two vacuum lines running here. You can either disconnect them uh, right here or disconnect them from the intake, which uh, I'm just going to disconnect mine from the intake since I'm pulling the whole thing out of the car. Um, it's actually just this one, I believe. And then your intake after all the bolts out should be loose just like that. And just wiggle. Alright guys, you're gonna want to disconnect this vacuum line from the back of the intake now. Should just slide right off. And then this wire at the very bottom, see this one right here? You're going to want to unplug that. And that should be everything uh holding your intake in place. All right, make sure you guys don't get any dirt down in the motor. It's like leaf right here on mine. Get that out of there. 
if you're going to uh, not work on this for a couple days or something like that make sure you uh, cover up uh, these with tape I recommend just cover them up with tape anyway and just clean all under here get all cleaned up here's one of my bolts right here fell under the intake and uh, make sure you replace these gaskets right here okay now we're going to switch uh, your fuel rails and fuel injectors over to your new intake so to unbolt the fuel rail uh, it's going to be E10 on these four bolts right here and after you take that off uh, you can either take it off from the fuel injector which will be popping this little clip off right here take that back like that or you can uh, <clears throat> try to take it out with the fuel injector I'm going to take my clip off and then take all the injectors out individually just because it will be a little easier that way all right when i pulled the fuel rail out the injectors came out with it so you don't really need to do this but i did wiggle them around a little bit before they popped out and before you put them back in make sure you put some type of like grease or like vaseline on these uh little green o-rings so they pop back in place and so they don't turn brittle and dry up all right now so you got your fuel rail in make sure you do get all your vacuum lines and everything from the other intake your new intake should come with some but the external ones uh, make sure you move those over all right now we're going to take the throttle body off of your old intake manifold put it on the new one uh it's an e10 all right make sure you get your gasket on uh for your throttle body it goes on just like this a little clip goes on the bottom right here and then it clips over this little metal piece right here and then you can put your throttle body on all right now we're going to put the intake back make sure you get your gaskets lined up for it and don't forget to plug this plug right here into the very back of the in, uh, throttle body right there where it plugs in uh, before you set it down all the way because it's uh, tricky to get to and then this vacuum line right here goes right there on the top of uh your throttle body all right once you get the intake back in it's kind of challenging because you have to maneuver through all these wires make sure you don't get any wires caught and make sure you get your gaskets lined up and then put your four bolts back in on each side and you can get them tightened down all right now i'm torquing down the intake manifold it's about seven foot pounds which this number actually seems correct I'm going to start at these uh, inside bolts right here on each side, those first two, and then do the two outside bolts. And I'm going to uh, go through it twice just to make sure everything is uh, tight. All right, after your intake is tightened down, uh, we're going to start plugging in everything. We're going to plug in our fuel injectors right here. Uh, these right here, going to get all these wires plugged in get this vacuum line right here plug this into this right here into this vacuum line running out of there um, and then you'll want to clip it back in place here and don't forget to plug in your wires back over here all right, after you get your injectors plugged in, you're going to want to line your wiring harness up back in place here. Uh, we're going to want to plug this back in up front here. Um, make sure all your vacuum lines are connected. This one goes right here. And your other one should already be plugged in right there. And now we're going to tighten these little brackets back here on each side. They're both E10s. They don't have any torque value. Just get them tight. Alright, All right, once this. your brackets are tight, yeah. we're going to put this vacuum hose back in. It runs under your wiring harness to here. Or after you run that vacuum hose all the way under here, under this little clip and into the back of your throttle body, we're going to tighten your wiring harness. Right now we're going to put your wiring harness back in, which are these uh, torque bolts right here with little heads. And they'll just drop in there and uh, there's no torque values on these, just get them tight. You don't want to get too tight because it is plastic and it can't. Alright, after you get uh, your wiring harness in, 
There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Bolts holding it. Uh, we're gonna put these pieces in for the ECU. It's 234. Okay, after you get everything else in, bolt down your ECU, we're gonna put this emissions control piece back in place. And it's uh, these three longer bolts right here. Hold it in place. One right here, one right there, and then uh, one right there in the bottom. You can see the one right there. And then get all your vacuum lines up. All right, now we're gonna put this bracket in place right here, mm -hmm. just like that. And then uh, we're gonna put this wire, clip it onto this piece right here, and this other wire um, should clip on somewhere. All right, now we've put the ECU in place. Make sure you all plugged in. It just drops down in place there. Make sure you get all your vacuum lines. This one right here on mine came disconnected. Your emission piece, vacuum lines. Um, put this on the back of your throttle body. So this goes on there. And then you'll have the other piece, your MAF air sensor, go on top. And then uh, put your intake back on. Okay, before we put your everything back on, we are going to want to reconnect your fuel line right here. And again, it is a 17. And you're going to want to tighten that up and make sure it's not leaking. And we are going to want to bleed the system. I will show you how to do that. All right, after your fuel line's in, we're going to turn the key in the to the third position in the car, so one right before it turns to start. And you're gonna come out here and push this little piece in like we did before, it's a little screwdriver or something. And that way you get all the air out of the system before you start it. All right, after you get that done, uh, it should actually be the second position, but fuel will squirt out, so make sure you have something under there. I've done it on mine already. I'm screwing my little black hat back on to prevent dirt getting in. Make sure you have uh, your MAF plugged in and then uh, go get your intake and set it on top and connect this vacuum line and then the one in the back and you should be good to start the car. Alright, once you guys get your intake back on, hook up all your vacuum lines, you should be done. Um, make sure you get these other tubes for your intake back in that go right there. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll see when I can get to them. Hope this video was helpful.